name, my name is Javi, and we're taking a look at the unique toys, I mean DX9, The Hire, which is a third-party version of the character Hot Rod from Transformers The Last Night. Maybe they meant Le Hire, because this character apparently has a French accent, but I wouldn't know because I still haven't seen Le fucking movie. Yet another example of third-party companies absolutely crushing it. They're also absolutely crushing my nuts. This black and orange beauty of a car is a Lamborghini Centenario. Wahoo! It's pretty accurate to the real thing as far as I can tell, but maybe there's some subtle proportional differences that I'm not privy to because I don't fuck cars. Feel free to educate me in the comments. There's one major difference from the real thing that is undeniable and that is a lack of a Lamborghini logo for obvious legal reasons. On first glance, you can't even tell that this thing transforms. Doubly so when you hold it, it doesn't even feel like it comes apart at all. Also has a nice weight thanks to some internal die cast metal. Some of it's peeking out at the butt. <laughs> of course, like any other transforming car toy in existence, the illusion is broken when you flip them over. You'd think that with so much junk underneath and the fact that the car is so low to the ground, he'd have a hard time rolling. <laughs> Yes, but not for the reasons you'd think. The rubber tires here are actually elevating the car just enough to clear the kibble. But the wheels here are not the most loose. Which is obviously gonna prevent maximum rollage. Or like maximum cringe, that fucking sucked. Speaking of cringe, don't forget to check out Jobby the Hong merch. Link in the description or the merch tab. Proceeds go to my cocaine. I'm sure we would have all been happy with the car as is, but this thing features opening doors. The hinge joints here are a little loose. Hopefully they don't tear off over time. But not just that, he actually has an interior. Fully sculpted seats and everything. Okay, maybe not quite everything. There's no steering wheel, there's a head there. But, and I do mean but, you get a mini figure that can sit inside here in theory. To whoever designed this minifigure, I get that you're really horny, but her long ass legs prevents her from sitting properly in the car. Also, my guy, you have a Tommy Wiseau fetish? I do too. So much so that me and my friend Civil wrote a whole song about his famous movie. So sexy in that red dress. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Just like the other Transformers that have minifigures, this is a completely useless feature. But I'm not mad about it. You wanna know why? This feature, the opening doors, the interior, does not compromise the transformation or the robot mode at all. Insert thing about back and lives, you know the drill. And using our DX9 part separator, not included surprisingly, you could even pop the trunk. Nothing really of note in here, all you get is more robot mode kibble. But maybe I can fit the lady in there like I would in real life. Nope, that sticks out like a sore thumb. I know I'm broke like a joke, but now for sure I'm never, never getting, getting a Lamborghini. Lamborghini. You also get a pair of guns that can't store anywhere 0 out of 10. As you'd probably expect, this car is not that big. Hey, here's Masterpiece MP10 Optimus Prime, my previous review, the Soul of Chagokin Vehicle Voltron, Masterpiece G1 Hot Rod, and the unique Toys Challenger, definitely not the same company, am I right? I'm actually not too sure about that situation. If my sources are correct, then DX9 is the same company as Unique Toys, which wouldn't be surprising. But then again, my sources are the TFW forms, and when have they been right about anything? This might seem out of nowhere, but I feel it's appropriate since this is the last review of the month. I gotta give a huge shout out to all of my patrons who keep the channel running, who keep my tummy full, and in that spirit, here's all your names during the transformation. Open the doors, unhook these tabs, untap the sides, open the trunk, split the back, lift the spoiler up. Those metal tabs that we unhooked earlier allows us to separate the arms from the legs. Split the front, and if you split it good enough, it should allow you to lift up the middle part. Coming to the bottom, fold the shoulders out. And over here, untab these panels. That allows you to fold the whole car in half. Extend this panel, fold the car again, fold the front down, and fold down this whole assembly. That actually plugs in. Fold up the head, close up the chest, turn this around, swivel, fold the spoiler out, and you're gonna wanna fold up this whole section. A lot of folding I'm noticing. Fold this down, and if you push down far enough, it hooks into place. What was formerly the trunk folds up and tabs in. Now the spoiler, flip this panel all the way up, and I mean all the way, and we'll just leave that for now. Turn this, fold that up, you can shove that panel
piano in there. Same on the other side. The top half of the body is coming together. Let's do the arms. Fold the seat down. Bring this out. Fold this up. And plug it in. Fold the hand out. And fold out the shoulder pad to poke them up. Same on the other side, of course. Now it looks kind of like Rat Trap from Beast Machines. That's the last time I say Beast Machines. There's these gray struts here that you want to unhook. Untap this panel. That releases the whole side. Rotate the leg. Untap the tail light. Split this. That whole thing spins around. Fold this up. Swivel this whole section so that the gray strut is pointing back. Fold this all the way out. Fold the gray strut down. And this panel plugs in. Now for the tail light. Pull that out. Hinge joint. It's spring loaded and you want to push it down. And while holding it down, fold it up into the foot. This metal tab plugs in. That completes the lower leg. Now for the thigh. Fold this out. Swivel here. Hinge joint. Swivel all the way so that the sharp part points up. And fold that back up until it tabs in. All of the same steps on the other side. Flip up the butt. Fold the top half down. And what was once the spoiler folds up to fill in the rest of the torso. Swivel the waist. You could keep the wing spread out for a more bumblebee look, but I prefer to fold them down. The transformation may have been a little complicated. I actually find this more challenging than Challenger. Ultimately, it was worth it because this robot mode is awesome. But I have to fully admit my bias. I hate this design for Hot Rod. Now, if you've been watching me for a long time, you know that I don't really care about the original G1 Hot Rod. Fuck him. But the fact that they didn't take even an inkling of inspiration from the source material shows me that it was a good thing Michael Bay left the franchise. They disregarded a unique design to give us orange bumblebee. But as a Transformers design separated from the original Hot Rod character, this guy is not bad at all. And as a transforming figure, this thing is even less bad. This figure is beautifully engineered. The car mode just disappears into this robot mode. As for movie accuracy, I guess this guy is a good enough representation of that design. But seeing as I don't give a shit about the movie, 100% accuracy is not a problem for me. And as I implied back in the car mode, this figure actually features back detail. Can we get a like on the video for yet another clean third party back? No. No, don't start with me. Don't start with me. Don't start with me, you motherfucker! That does not count as bag detail. I should probably take a look at an official Takara toy that I actually like before it looks like I hate the company. Too late? Alright. The figure might look very nice, but looks aren't everything. How does this guy feel? Feel? Very good, actually. Passes the shake test with fine colors. Not wobbly at all, slightly hefty due to the diecast metal, which makes it really fun to pose. Up and down, maybe all the way down, that that doesn't count. Rotation at the shoulder, no forward butterfly joint, but it can move back. Arm moves out, swivel here, bend at the elbow, wrist swivel, can move in and out, ball joint, hinge joint at the thumb, hinge joint, hinge joint, hinge joint at the index finger, and the same with the rest of his fingers. The wings can move out, hinge joint, swivel here, waist swivel, ab crunch, rotation at the leg can't move back that far the hinge joint at the thigh is a little too loose but nonetheless you get a beautiful spread that you want to be careful with thigh swivel bend at the knee no up and down at the ankle unique toys really has to work on that i mean the x9 but you do get a ghost of a toe bend and a beautiful pivot posability here is really good but his poses don't feel complete without some firepower and that looks fine on its own but a gun is kind of useless without some ammo very tiny accessory be careful not to lose it you also get a an effect part to complete the look. Same thing with his other gun, which I prefer, but weirdly enough, you only get one clip and one effect part. So yeah, he can dual wield, but it's really ineffectual when one of the guns is unloaded. It really makes no sense to me. Maybe all their budget went into her ass. Despite a ton of moving parts and great mechanical detail, this guy is not that big. Here's Transform Element OP Leader, Vehicle Voltron, G1 Hot Rod, and Challenger. Like any figures from the same line, these guys look great together. While while I still like Challenger more, I just prefer that design. La Hire here is undeniably a brilliant figure. These guys are making me so hype for unique toys, DX9, wherever. Their future releases look amazing. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss those reviews. Ah. Definitely get this figure if you're a Michael Bay fan. Also get out. So you may have noticed that big ass, big bad toy store box behind me. Or if you saw my social media post, follow me. Oh, son of a bitch. Mm. Ah. Oh my god. Planet X Apocalypse, a third party fall of Cybertron Triptychon. Both parts. And one more thing, Starscream. If you want to watch me open more boxes, subscribe to Jobby2. I'm going to do another fail box stream next week. I also stream games and occasionally drawing. I'll see you next time. Ah.